Hi, Derek Wright here from freedomcallingrv.com, and today we're going to talk about how to keep your dog safe while you're not actually in the RV. And I'm also going to talk about how to keep them safe while you're on the road. Highly controversial topic. So stick around. If this is your first time watching the show, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button below. And once you hit it, there should be a bell icon. Hit on that bell icon and you'll be notified every time we release or publish a new video. All right, so here it goes. We've been living full time in an RV for about 18 months. Before we started this journey, we knew that we were gonna have to consider our dogs. We have two large dogs, but we weren't gonna let the fact that we had two large dogs stop us from going on this journey. So we actually have a Rottweiler and we have a German Shepherd, two large, larger dogs. Now, there are gonna be some places that you go and you're gonna to wanna to do some things that will not allow dogs. So what do you do with your dogs when they are not allowed to go with you? Here's the short answer. And um, here's what I'm gonna tell you before I go any further in this video. None of what I'm saying is right or wrong, all right? People are going to have opinions, that's great. We have a First Amendment in this uh, great country of America, the United States, and you are welcome to express your opinions. This is what works best for my family and our dogs. So you might have another uh, way of going about it. You might have your own opinions and you're welcome to express them in the comments below. Uh, we have a right to do that, right? So here is how we handle the situation. If we're going to a park, an amusement park, or somewhere that will not allow dogs, we leave them in the RV. There you have it. It's simple, right? It's a, it's a stroke of genius. We leave our dogs in the RV for um, a couple of hours, the couple of hours that we're gonna be at the theme park or wherever we're going. Now, how do we actually leave them in our RV? Well, our Rottweiler is pretty geriatric. She is chill, right? She's been with us all over the country. She's flown um, and she very seldom, actually she's never had an accident in our RV. She very seldom has accidents in our house unless she's sick or something. We don't really put her in a crate. We don't do anything different. We allow her to free reign, free roam um, throughout uh, our RV. I'm actually on a farm right now and there's a weird sound, like a cat or something. So our Rottweiler has pretty much free reign of the RV. We let her lay down wherever she wants. Now the German Shepherd is a little different story. Our German Shepherd is extremely loyal and we are pretty sure, he wants to be with us wherever we go. And most times he is with us wherever we go. But the problem is he's not a companion dog and he's not a working dog. Now we were, are working on the companion uh, piece of that. I mean, he pretty much is a companion dog. Uh, he likes to go with us wherever we go. He likes to be by our side and we're completely fine with that. We like to take him wherever we go. But in some certain, certain circumstances, he is not allowed to go. Now, if we were allowed, if we let him, left him in our RV, um, under his own free will, he would probably scratch out a window or jump through a window to try to get to us. I've got another story about something similar in another video. You're welcome to watch it. I think it's uh, five tips for traveling full-time with dogs. I'll link that below. You can watch it. But we're pretty sure that he would try to scratch out of the RV to try to find us and try to get to us. But we actually use, so how we counter that is we actually use a portable or a collapsible crate. I'll link that down below so you can see it. These things have uh, come in handy uh, many times on many occasions. For some reason, when uh, our German Shepherd is in these crates, he doesn't try to scratch out of it. I don't know if it's kind of the confined space or it's like a den for him and it calms him down or, or what. Um, but we find that it actually works well for us. So we actually leave him in that crate. Now you might be asking, well, what about emergencies? Aren't you worried about fires or your dogs getting injured or, or uh, something if an emergency happens and you're not actually in your RV? Here's the truth of the matter. I don't know if we've been lucky on the road or what, but in every place that we've been to, we have been able to make friends with someone um, and we've been able to exchange phone numbers with them. And to some cases, we've actually left our RV keys with them because we've actually, over that short period of time, we've learned to trust them. Most of the time, it's families that are doing the same thing that we're doing, or it's a veteran family. Somebody, someone who can relate to us as veterans, my wife and I. And we actually spark up those conversations about traveling on the road and being a veteran. And uh, sometimes I'll find active duty guys and sometimes I'll find reservists. So everywhere we've go, we've been able to relate with someone and make friends with someone. And um, you know, we are confident that they would call us up or, and we would call them if something was going wrong with their RV or if we saw something. 
uh, for instance, we noticed that I think water, I think water was pouring out of this guy's uh, RV one time and we called him up and said, hey bud, you know, they went, they were about an hour or two away and um, they had actually left us, you know, a key to their RV and they said, hey, go in and check it out. And it turned out uh, their, their water spigot was actually on. Luckily, we caught it in time, so it wasn't a huge deal. So we dried it out, put our dehumidifier in there, and it was fine. But here is uh, back to the dogs. So what I'm saying is, yes, there's always a slim chance that an emergency will happen. Something might happen, right? There's always a chance. The truth of the matter is that when we're on the road, we usually run into people that actually help us out a lot with that. If there was an accident or something going on, they would either notify us or they would have a key to our property and they would come in and let the dogs out or um, keep an eye on it. And something strange about, well, it's not strange at all, but in the RV community, what we have found, and maybe your experiences are different, but the places that we have been to, there is an amount of, I guess, loyalty or, you know, rules. You know, people just don't go up to other people's RVs. They don't meddle with their stuff. And there's like a, a neighborhood watch atmosphere everywhere you go. So people are constantly watching. They know, know if new people are coming in. Um, we've never felt in danger at all when we've been at the RV parks that we've chosen. All right, so they, that is that. When they are stationary, if we're stationary in a park and we're going somewhere that does not allow dogs, we actually keep them in the RVs. We either crate them or we let them have free roam. Most of the time, our German Shepherd is going to be crated and our Rottweiler is going to be free. And that also gives us a sense of another added sense of security as well. We know that if somebody comes in our RV or knocks on the door or something, our dogs are going to go crazy. And our Roddy, you know, they won't hesitate if they, they think their job is to protect us. Our dogs are not aggressive, but I guarantee that if somebody one try to do something to my kids or try to break into our RV, our dogs are going to go after them. Um, and, you know, if they bite them, I don't know, but they will definitely be known. They will let it be known that they are there to do a job. Um, so what do we do when we're actually traveling on the road? Well, this is another highly controversial topic, but what we do is our dogs actually ride in our fifth wheel. A lot of people have problems with that. I'm just letting you know what we do, what works best for us. We feel it's safer to have our dogs actually in our RV. We don't let them have free roam, but they actually lay on the bed, on our master bedroom and my, uh, Stephanie and I's bed. They actually lay down the entire trip. So they're not moving around. They're actually, you know, closed up in there. And we've actually put ba a baby monitor on them before and watched them. And they just chill. They just lay on the bed. Um, we used to keep them in the crates. We used to put the crates on top of the bed when we traveled. And we would strap the crates down. And when we put the baby monitor on them, we could tell they were, they were just... Um, uh, they didn't look comfortable. They looked nervous. They would pace around in that crate and um, they were panting a lot. So we actually did away with the crates and they do a lot better just laying on the bed. They're not nervous. You know, when we stop, they're still sleeping. You know, we got to wake them up to get them out. And here's why we chose to do that. You know, we have three kids that ride in the back of our truck. Our dogs could, they could lay down at the floor, the, the floorboard of our truck inside the cab. You know, there is room for that. But here's why we chose not to. If for the slight chance, if for whatever reason we were in an accident, those dogs now become projectiles. And I don't want to risk them hitting my kids or hurting my kids even more on top of the accident that we're in. Now in the RV, they are not projectiles. They're only projectiles for themselves. And if my feelings are, if my truck is in an accident, then the RV is going to be in an accident. RV is going to be an accident. Truck's going to be an accident. If we're in an accident, we're all in an accident together. I'd much rather have my dogs riding in the RV, laying down, chilling out, than in the truck going crazy if we are in an RV, because then we risk uh, injuring ourselves and our kids. And it's not a risk I'm willing to take. So if you have different feelings than that, you're more than welcome to leave them below. Um, keep them nice if you don't mind, because we have, we have said this in RV groups before, and we have got hammered by the responses. But that is how we actually leave our dogs, keep them safe while they're in the RV if we're doing something that won't allow dogs, and that is how we travel down the road with our dogs. Now, if you have a recommendation on how to travel or how to leave your dogs in an RV while uh, you are out doing something, then leave that comment down below. I'm, I'm willing to hear it. I'm willing to answer you. Um, so there you have it. Thanks for tuning in today. That is how we actually keep our dogs safe while in the RV if we are not at home. Um, 
you know, if we're out doing something and the dogs can absolutely not come with us, I will caveat it. If at all possible, we always try to carry our dogs, especially the German shepherd, because he loves to be with us. The Rottweiler is so, you know, she actually likes to be in the, in the RV now, you know, I don't know if it's cause she's older. She sleeps a lot. You know, she eats, she sleeps, she goes out, does her business. We walk her and she comes in. She actually wants to be in the RV. She doesn't like to run and play and be messed with that much. But our German Shepherd always likes to be with us. So there you have it. Um, we'll see you next time. Take care.